when, if not now, that I wear my Sweden jersey after that victory. That was very important and we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. Of course, it's my new Sweden jersey from 2002, the one with the weird mesh here on the side. <laughs> I've shown you in the video already. First, a correction of yesterday. I had yesterday a correction in the video that I was wrong about the uh, England-Croatia game. I want to apologize again. Uh, if Croatia gets a 1-1 in uh, England and the game is at 3 o'clock Central European time, um, which was surprising to me that's an afternoon, but I'm actually quite happy about that because then I don't have to switch between England against Croatia and Switzerland Belgium. See, I got the home teams right this time. So yeah, um, a 1-1 one -one will relegate England. <laughs> Unbelievable this is, and promote Spain. Uh, but the correction of yesterday, I said Armenia won 5-2 in Gibraltar, and uh, the Gibraltar was 1-0 ahead. <laughs> I was wrong. I missed the first goal of um, Armenia. Armenia went ahead, Gibraltar equalized. It was 1-1 at halftime, and in the 94th, they made the 6th. So. A 6-2 win of Armenia over Gibraltar in Gibraltar, who has six points, unbelievably, and they won, I think, in Armenia even. Uh, in the group now, we have the country that's not to be named. I continue saying it like that. Um, Nova Macedonia, Fyrom, Macedonia, however you want to call it. Leading with 12 points ahead of Armenia with 9 and Gibraltar. With six, Liechtenstein has three points. Um, they play at home. Um, Firem, let's call it Firem. Actually, I don't like it, but let's call it Firem. Um, has not a tiebreaker of Armenia. So they need to get a point to qualify for League C. Otherwise, if Armenia um, wins against Liechtenstein and Gibraltar should pull out another sensation. It's Armenia that goes through. So uh, there's a little bit of drama. Uh, also very some drama. There is a final uh, in the other, in another League D group. Uh, we had today that Azerbaijan beats the Faroe Islands 2-0, which was important. And then Malta loses at home to Kosovo 5-0. Uh, 5-0. So the Kosovo is the strongest team in that group, but they have now a final home game against Azerbaijan and Kosovo has 11 points. Azerbaijan has 9 points. If Azerbaijan wins, they are through. Any other result will see Kosovo through and they seem to be the strongest team. Ferry Islands has 4, Malta 2. So they also play against each other now uh, in Malta. Uh, remains to be seen how that one will go if Malta wins the day have the honor of not finishing last in that group. Um, although I never discount the Ferry Islands. Okay, League C, that was actually the first game played today. Uh, Serbia against Montenegro. Um, there was something, yes, there was something. In 2006, those two nations were still one team and were called Serbia Montenegro and that was what was left from former Yugoslavia. Go figure, uh, now they played against each other and in my preview of that group, I said that Serbia needs to uh, get a win and they are through. I was a little bit too fast here. Again, um, Serbia got the win. They scored two goals in the 30th and the 30, 32nd to put them safe ahead. But Montenegro came fighting back. Uh, didn't see, I saw the two goals and I saw that Montenegro made one goal and then one other that was before that was uh, disallowed for offside, um, probably correct. Uh, Montenegro mounted the challenge, but um, Serbia was in that case not, in, not, not to be denied. It was not the greatest Serbian performance, but I remain, they looked like to be the strongest team in this group. Um, so it would be just, it would not be the wrong, it would not not the wrong as Serbia would not would make it out of that group uh, as the winners. Um, I have to say though, I love the Montenegro home away jerseys. Now we saw them, they're white. Wonderful red collar with the button and the yellow on there. I absolutely love that one. Um, this will for sure go in a jersey review. Um, I, you know, there are a few jerseys that I couldn't find in League C and I will make a separate video for that. 
Uh, coming up soon, I've shot two for League D. I think I probably will do the, all the League D ones, maybe. Let's see. Probably I will do those. Then I'll make a catch-up video with all the shirts that we haven't seen that we should look at too. I really intend to look at all the shirts. Uh, that settled it. So Serbia had 11 points. That meant Romania needed to win to keep their chances alive. And Romania won 3-0 against Lithuania. We saw another Lithuania away shirt, which is red, which I didn't say in the video. Uh, I expect it to be green, but I uh, researched a little bit um, this week and I saw that they play in red now. So be it. They played in red against Romania. A Romania win th wins 3-0. So we have Serbia 11, Romania 9 and Montenegro 7. Serbia has a home game against Lithuania and a point is not enough. They need to win if they want to be absolutely sure. Why? If they get a point, they are 12. Romania wins in Montenegro, which is probably the harder task. They also will have 12 points and they have the tiebreaker because they play 2-2 in Serbia and 0-0 at home. And as much as this 0-0 at home uh, was Serbia squandering um, a certain victory, as much Romania has the tiebreaker. So yeah, also a little bit of drama there. I still cannot see. Uh, I think uh, it really has to go crazy if Serbia is not making it out of that group. The other group in League C is the only three-point group and we have the first um, break, if you want. So far, every home team won today. The away team, Scotland, managed a 4 nil victory in Albania. Match just finished a few minutes ago. Again, I did not see it today. They didn't have a goal zone, which I don't understand because there were three games, so you could have switched around, but maybe it may, maybe even more. So, um, yeah, but okay. It was all about Italy against Portugal, for me, at least personally. Um, Scotland, Albania, 4-0. And it doesn't mean much for Scotland. That's that's the weird thing. If Albania would have won that one by the same scoreline, then uh, yes, uh, that would have meant something. If Albania would have won, they still would have lost the tiebreaker. And yeah, it's now Albania is relegated to League... Potentially relegated to League D. Um, I have to look at that. I think Lithuania for sure is relegated and then we have to see because if um, the, the three last place teams for sure go down then the worst third place team also gets down. And I don't know if Albania with three points has a good chance. I really have to look at that. I don't know for now. Uh, going through groups, Hungary for sure is better, I would say. But again, it's only the... Um, only the matches between the top three so yeah but i think hungary is still better so for them it counts um montenegro is montenegro is a point against romania they're still not better yet and that's the last one that's probably uh, Cyprus also uh, could be enough for Albania. Could be enough for Albania. So yeah, but I have to. I, I, I will tell you um, in another video, probably potentially tomorrow. So we have that one. Scotland still needs to win against Israel. Direct will be damned, but Scotland needs to win against Israel at home. If they do that. Scotland is through, otherwise Israel is through. So um, it's an even matchup. I still would favor Scotland. And then the two big matches: uh, Turkey against Sweden. That was a real final. Um, whoever wins that game has a chance. Whoever loses the game will be relegated. And it is Sweden with a penalty. And it was actually weird. I didn't see the first um, twenty-five minutes because I was out with my girls. And came back and all I saw was kind of Turkey a little bit on the offensive and Sweden holding back. And when the Jalanoglu had a huge chance right before a stroke of half and I thought this was probably Turkey's half. And I said, well, at the beginning, Sweden looked a little bit more secure and those were basically the only chances for Turkey. So yeah, uh, Turkey has a young team and you, you hope that Lugesco gets the time to build this young team. 
um, Sweden as veterans. And the game was overly, overall even. I would say first half uh, advantage Turkey, second half Sweden took the game to Turkey. You could see that Sweden said ah, it's now a little bit more ur urgency. Um, they had a few good chances uh, at the beginning of the second half. Had full control. Turkey didn't show much uh, in the second half anymore. Um, couldn't live up to it. And they got a penalty. Yeah, <laughs> with all the experience that you can have, it was a penalty. And Granqvist scores a winner. Um, I feel sad for Turkey because uh, they made a good run in this group. But you know, uh, in that group, if I had to choose one team, it's Sweden. I have more connections to Sweden than to Russia or to Turkey. That much for sure. So, hence, I'm even wearing the Sweden jersey. But yeah, uh, I was surely an, in an interesting game. I also gotta say why the stadium that they were playing, they were all Turkish flags. It was a little bit overkill on Tur Turkish flags. I mean, I'm more used to having, you know, the flags of the nations that are participating plus the um, referee and the UEFA flag. This was a little bit overkill uh, on Turkish flags there. But I guess under the current rule, we need to be very nationalistic. That's all I'm going to say about that. So Sweden has a final against Russia. Sweden beats Russia. Sweden is in League A. Any other result, we'll see Russia through. Interesting. Another interesting game. And probably, yeah, no, there are quite a few interesting games on Tuesday. Unfortunately, no interesting game in League A. Italy, Portugal. Italy really played well. Most of the time, especially in the first half, they had chances. And like against Poland, they cannot convert their chances. They had uh, Poland on back foot. They were fluid in attack. Uh, many chances wasted. It reminded me a little bit about Austria in 2015 when they also were kind of fluid pressing and everything. But out of the many chances, you make one goal and you hope that it uh, that's the result that you want to get, which Austria got back then. Italy today just couldn't break through in the first half. They would have deserved the lead. And I was thinking, this goes a little bit similar to, uh, to this game against Sweden of all nations. That game pisses me still off. As much as I like Sweden, uh, Italy is just the team that I enjoy. I, I have a root for more. Um, and I do like Sweden, but uh, for me, Italy not qualifying, and this was so self-made, I'm still really not over that match. And this was basically same stadium, a uh, bit more than a year later. And very interesting, 25 years ago, Italy also played on the same date in the same stadium against Portugal. Because the German commentator that I had today, uh, he that was his first game for Italy that he commentated. <laughs> so he had a very weird... Um, I don't know, anniversary, do you say, 25 years, to the day on the same opponent. Not the same result back then in the 83rd, Dino Baggio. <sighs> the Italian team back then was just a great team. Made the winning goal and in the end it was Italy going to the World Cup, not Portugal. And yeah, 25 years ago, it was 93. So that was when the way made it, made it to the final. Uh, yeah, but... Second half, Italy had a big chance, really, really nicely played, and Chiesa should have made that goal. Uh, I missed back that much. Um, Insigne had a great chance in the first half, uh, a goalkeeper saved uh, big. But then you could already see that Portugal is pressing a little bit higher, and whenever the, uh, it, it, Italy had the ball in defense, the only way that they could uh, find somebody to play to was the goalkeeper. So, and with that, Portugal managed to disrupt Italy and kind of took a little bit more control over, over the game. And I was actually afraid that it would be not proper. It gets this breakthrough. And they almost got in the 75th uh, great shot. And Donnarumma makes a very, very good save. Uh, I would say it's a save that he probably has to make. But if he doesn't make, it's not his fault. And um, but Donnarumma... Was a little bit shaky for Milan, but that was a great save. That kind of reminds you why he is the goalkeeper for Italy in the, in the future. I mean, a, a deep dive, and he's long, and then just with the thumb basically pushes it from low over the bar. Slightly rem reminiscent of the bar on that save of Gordon Banks against Pele. Not quite, but uh, at least the save was very similar. 
Yeah, and then Italy, the last few minutes they tried to get back. Um, Insigne had a chance in the 87th. Uh, I think there was a header. Frugino in the nothing really where you say this has to be a goal. And so it ends 0 0, and we have the first qualifier for the uh, final four in Portugal. All the other groups, uh, top spots still to be decided. So, Portugal, congratulations. You made it, and as European champions, probably deservedly so uh, to have you in there. I think the future for Italy looks good. Um, they just need to get a strike, and you have Immobile there, but Immobile doesn't do anything for Italy. Immobile is good for Lazio and some not so great teams in Italy, but seemingly the type that gets the more trouble he has. Italy needs a striker somewhere, somehow. We'll see. Well, that's it from me for today. I'm gonna post this, you have this tomorrow in the morning. Uh, let me know what you thought about all these games and what you watched and where you think things might go. Don't forget England, Croatia. I think it's the biggest matchup of, of them all of the remaining three days. Uh, because there's, it can go either way, it can go in all directions, and that's what I absolutely love. Absolutely glued to this matchup. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video, subscribe to my channel here. Uh, if you want to see more, I also created a Twitter account now, my soccer universe at my soccer universe one. I'm not gonna see if I can change that. Uh, we are also post a video with the videos directly, it's similar to my Facebook group. But you know, uh, join all of these and you're for sure updated. I'm posting quite some additional stuff on the Facebook group and you also get some of my blog posts right there. So you have everything together. Of course, I would be very happy if you also sign up for my YouTube channel because the more subscribers I have, the better it is to keep this up. Again, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Talk to you tomorrow.